Hello and welcome back to Overthinking Gamer. We are back with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Last time we had gotten the confusion ending. And what I'm going to test now is to see if the confusion ending, if that was the end of it, or if there's more to it. So last time, if you remember, we had answered a call. I'm starting back from right where we left off. We answered a call from this and they said they were delivering a shit ton of cardboard boxes. And I kind of forgot about that. And I, I, I'm curious if this is like a cardboard ending or something. Like, I, I don't know. I'm a little, uh, oh, wait a second. Is this because on the schedule it said Stanley couldn't continue. Is it because of the cardboard boxes? I wonder. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. That's new. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man <laughs> love Probably a room? room? Oh, this room I mean, is beautiful. Truly, truly, deeply, madly, love. No idea. I also have a question. From At this section... Um... He oh, no. Okay. No, to the right, my mistake. He shuts it quick. I thought I could get through there. Okay, so that is the ending of the confusion ending. I had to be sure. I had to check it out and be sure. But yes, that is the actual ending. So that's great. Now what I want to do is go into the right door, but actually get back on track to where the story is supposed to go. Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. Kind of odd. Or what are you going to say this time? Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps That's too majestic. majestic. Like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley uncomfortable, and he started to bleed a little. This made him smile. At last, proof that he was human. What was that? <laughs> What? But eager to that get was horrifying. Business, Stanley took the first what? <laughs> open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Okay, so we are back on track, apparently. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. The broom so he closet. And got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. Beautiful. It's a beautiful room. Do I mean, you see the beautifulness of this gray room? You do realize there's room? no choice or anything in here, right? Yeah, if that's I just said a beautiful room. Stanley walked past the broom closet. At least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Why is it here? Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> what is that voice? Friends find this concerning. Nah, they'll find it amazing. Yeah, do you see this room? Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs <laughs> and hookers. Yeah, you know it. You get me. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. <laughs> You're dead. Yeah. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, 
when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and may I make sense the keyboard <laughs> well, in a situation like this, Keyboard. the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before mm. it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. That it? All right, I'm bored. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. <laughs> on board. Tea. You can't do any worse than the person wait, who came before you. Wait. What if you too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species <laughs> of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. And I wait again. Fine aboard. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Well, I think we walked upstairs last time. We go downstairs. Did we walk downstairs last time? I can't remember. But Stanley no. just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley Flash. pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't okay. going to lose his job. Okay. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, lucid he dreaming? imagined himself flying. And began to gently float above the ground. Oh, baby. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps question. the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly It's pretty strange. meta. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts. He that thought. is a And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. 
So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, mm -hmm. the fresh air of a oh, yeah? world outside this one. Oh, yeah? Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. How dreams work. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. You sure? I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. That's kind of horrifying. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. Everybody and knows. in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. Except for this voice. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. I if this is the actual end. Like, this is the official, like... official... ending. Anyway, it's all that I have time for in this episode. That that was an ending. Uh, next time, we'll try to do something different. This one... I'm trying to think of how this one went. Okay, so we'll try going up the stairs and doing a few different things in the boss's office. I think there's more you can do in the boss office. boss's office. Yeah, we'll check that out next time. But uh, yeah, if you like what you saw, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, see when I post videos. And uh, as always, stay blessed, my friends. Bye.